Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome to the RM Mastery Course Level 1 for Beginners. This tutorial is part of the YouTube Edition playlist Django Database RM Mastery. You can find the link to this playlist in the video description where you'll find all the tutorials associated to this course. In this tutorial, we delve deeper into the concepts of foreign keys and learn how to insert data into a table when a foreign key exists. If you would like to follow along step by step, you can download our base Django project, code base one. There is a link in the video description to that code. Now, if you are not familiar with Django and how to start a new Django project, there is also a video guide on how to download and start the project. Again, there is a link in the video description to that. If you like this course and would like to learn more, then do consider our course on Udemy Django Database RM Mastery Level 1. The actual thumbnail might change over time, but just look for Created by Very Academy. There is a link in the video description to the course that is always going to give you the best price for the course. If we take a look at our database design, you can see that we have quite a few tables here that are dependent upon foreign key relationships. One in particular is the product inventory table. If we include a field in a table that specifies a foreign key, so if we set up a foreign key field inside of our table, it means essentially that we need to have a relationship between this table that we're currently in and the table then specified in the foreign key. So if we have a look at the product inventory table here, we have a foreign key brand and that then builds a connection, a many to one connection over to this brand table, an association, a relationship. So when we enter a new item, a new object, a, a new product inventory item inside of this table, we need to make sure that there is a reference from um, this table over to the brand table. So we cannot enter anything into this table unless we specify the foreign key, which is a, in this case will be, for example, a number which correlates to the primary key over here in the brand. So for example, if we wanted to build a connection from here to here, first of all, we would need to make sure there is something already inside the brand table. So objects, items, rows already need to exist inside the brand table. So let's pretend we go ahead and add something in the brand table. So brand ID one and then name Nike. Okay, so that's now in the brand table. So now when we create a product here in the product inventory table, we would need to specify the ID in the foreign key and save that in this field to the ID correlating to the product or the brand, sorry, that we want to associate in the brand table. So we need to make a relationship. If we didn't have anything stored in the brand table, we wouldn't be able to actually submit or we wouldn't be able to insert any items inside the product inventory table. So there is a restriction there that's been generated from the foreign key. Now, if you look closely here, we have three foreign keys in actual fact here in this table. So that means that the product table must be populated for us to make a, an association um, to the product. So we associate a product inventory item, a sub product, if you like, to an item in the product table. You can see that we have a product type table. So we must supply a product type um, foreign key, uh, a reference to this table and entry in this table. And we've already seen that there should also be a brand foreign key. So we need to consider that when we build items or when we add objects to this table. So the plan here is we're going to build a few different SQL statements and we're going to populate the brand, the product and the product type table. And then we go ahead and populate the product inventory table associating the product to or the product in the product inventory here, associate that to these three tables or a reference or an entry in these three tables. Right, so first of all, then let's get into the shell so we can start adding items into our tables. So there's three tables that we're going to need. If we just go into the inventory model here, um, we've already utilized the product table. So we know about that. We know about the brand table, um, but we're looking for the product type. 
So we also need to make sure that we include the product type table. So let's bring in all the resources that we're going to need. Uh, so you can see at the top here, you can copy that in. Um, don't forget there is a, a markdown file associated to this tutorial, so you can go ahead and download that. Right, so we bring all those in. So those are all the tables that we're going to access. So let's just go ahead and add everything that we need here. So first of all, the brand. So I'll just type it in up the top here first. So brand.objects.we'll we'll just use create here. Um, you can use save. Um, so we've got brand ID that we're going to need equals uh, one and then name equals we go for Nike. There we go. So that's going to be the brand. Now we we just need to check actually and to make sure there isn't anything in the database. If you have been following these tutorials step by step, you may already you may already have data inside of a database. So yep. Yeah, so just go ahead and delete the brand first. Is that there? Okay, and then we can go ahead and add something into the brand table. Okay, so that's the brand table sorted. All right, so next up, we have the uh, product table. So let's go ahead and add something into the product table. There's a few fields here, so you may want to download the code associated to this tutorial and just copy and paste this in. So next up, the product. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and just delete everything that might be in the table. So I did have one item. You may not have any items, it's okay. And then we're gonna use dot save here just to mix it up a little bit. So you can see that I've got the web ID, the slug, the name. So these are all the fields in the table, description, and then is active. So I have missed a few. If you were to have a look at the schema here, you can see that created and updated. This all gets updated automatically. And I'm also just um, admitting the category field, the many to many field, that's not gonna be a problem. Right, so let's just go ahead and copy that in. So those are all the fields. So that's now inserted nicely. So last of all, we are going to need the product type table. So just the ID uh, will be fine here, I reckon. So let's go ahead and do that now. There shouldn't be anything there, so I don't need to delete here. So we can just do the product uh, type and dot objects dot uh, create. And then we've got the ID, which is auto incrementing, and we should have product type attributes, which we're just gonna leave blank, I think. So um, let's just go back into our models, product type. So the product type, uh, isn't gonna exist. we've got a name here, actually. Um, that's something that wasn't included. I need to update that. So there's a, a product type um, name. Uh, so we need to be careful of that. So let's just uh, make sure we just populate the name equals um, shoe, for example. Okay, right. So with that in place, uh, I think we can add a new product type. There we go. So we've added a new product called shoe. So let's just visualize this. So brand in SQLite Explorer here, we've got our brand one and Nike. We have in our uh, product table, we have a new product called Nike One Shoe, so Nike, blah, blah, blah. So that's the product. And then in the content type, we should have one entry. Oh no, not that, um, apologies, product type, sorry. Uh, we have one entry here, the shoe. Right, so now we have everything set up so we can connect an entry here in the product table, the product inventory table to all of these associated um, fields inside of the three tables that we've just generated data for. Now, all tables have, except the brand table, have a, an auto incrementing primary key um, named ID. So we need to be careful of that, of course. So let's just check the brand. So the brand has a, an ID of one um, category product. So you just need to be careful. So you can see the product is actually ID2. So we need to be careful of that to associate it with product ID2 in the product. And then in the product type, you can see that it's just ID1. So that's important to understand too when we connect everything up. So you can see there's quite a fair few product inventory fields. So again, please go ahead and download the code associated to this tutorial. You'll find a markdown file. Now you'll be able to just copy and paste all of these fields if you don't want to write them out manually. 
Okay, so let's fill this in. So there's a few fields at the start, SKU, uh, let's just check SKU and UDP. Remember, this is an auto incrementing primary key. Um, so we do, maybe we've specified a primary key here. Um, just looking at the model on my other screen here, it hasn't actually been set to primary key. So that's a, a an error on my behalf, so apologies. Uh, so with that in case, oh, actually, we may as well just add the name here. Apologies, uh, insert right below, uh, name. Okay, so that's also there. Um, so, yeah, so we've got SKU, UDP, and then we've got some UPC, sorry, then some foreign keys. So let's go back. So SKU, uh, UPC. So I'm just following the data types as well. Uh, so product type then. Okay, so the actual field name is, uh, let's have a look, product. What's going on here? So product inventory, the actual field is called product type. So here I'm specifying the fact um, that in the product type table, I want to match it to the ID. So here I'm saying product type and then underscore ID, and that's one. Okay, so that attaches um, this or references ID one of the product type table, which we know uh, holds our entry that we created earlier. So next up, is the product ID. So a similar thing again, but this time remember the product ID, the first one we entered just happens to be two because we added one and deleted it. So the ID was two. So you need to just double check your database because um, yours might be number one. So mine's number two in the product here. So this is the SQL Lite extension here in Visual Studio Code. Right, so, and then finally, remember the, um, the field brand, uh, let's go in here. Uh, so we are using brand um, and notice what we're doing here in the brand table. The primary key isn't called ID. If you remember, it's called brand ID, but we don't necessarily have to build that connection because remember we, we created a, a uniquely named primary key, a manual primary key. So we can still reference it to it as ID. And we remember the first item in there is ID one and we've made a connection to that. So that's how we're going to build this object and this new entry into our database. We need to make sure that we've referenced all of these tables here in this case, at least. So your tables might just have one foreign key, right? So retail price, store price, sale price, weight. And I think we're done there. So let's go ahead and add this now into the database. There we go. So that's now added into the database. So that's how to handle foreign keys in your table. You need to make sure that the associated tables have uh, are populated so that we can build that reference. And then we need to reference uh, those specific um, rows, objects in those tables to then ensure that we have a reference point to those tables to connect this object, this thing that we're creating in a database to those tables or to those to the data in those tables. So a good question here is what happens when we delete an object in the brand table that's associated to an object in the product inventory table? Because we built a link, we're saying that there is a, a relationship. So what happens when that relationship breaks? Because essentially when then we are breaking the rules that we've just defined. Well, if we look back in the models, we can see that we have the on delete attribute and that will then specify the behavior. What will happen if you were to delete an item inside of, for example, the brand table? What would happen to the objects in the product inventory table? So by all means, go ahead and have a look at the Django documentation. There are a few different options. Um, so here is protect has been specified. So essentially what is happening here is that we won't be able to delete any items in the brand table that is associated to any products in the product inventory table. So we can go ahead and simulate that. So let's pretend we're going to delete um, all the items from, for example, the brand table. Remember there's only one. So brand table dot object to delete. Um, brand, apologies. Let's do that again. Objects dot all. I don't think you can see that. Let me bring this up. There we go. So objects are all delete. And you can see that we have deleted them. 
I was reading the wrong row. Apologies. You can see here that the actual fact this foreign key um, on delete is set to set null. So in actual fact, we can delete the brand items, but let's go ahead now and delete the product table that has protect. Apologies there. Uh, so let's do the same thing again, but for the products table. Okay, let's uh, cancel that. So let's go ahead and I'll just type it out. I'm not too sure what's happening there. So products or product dot object dot all delete. So this time we raise an error. So we're told here that we cannot delete some instances of model product because they are referenced through protected foreign keys. So that's referring to this setting here in the product field, which is in the product inventory table. So that was a little bit out of the scope of this tutorial, but hopefully that gives you a direction to have a little read through the Django documentation to familiarize yourself with all the different settings there, should any data get deleted from an associated foreign key table. So I think that's all for this tutorial. Hopefully there was some key points there to understand in regards to working with foreign keys. Hopefully you feel comfortable now and you've learned now how to insert into single tables uh, which include foreign keys.